Jason's back. He's back on Dancing and Ice. He's in the studio today. Have uh, people been welcoming back? Is glad to see him back. Show. I'm glad to see him back. Better for it. Yes. Yeah. Old Frosty Pants. You need himself. a villain, don't you? Yes, he yes, is yes. it. But first, it's time to talk high society with acting royalty. Olivia Williams has starred in holiday movies, uh, Hollywood movies. You'll have seen her in the X Men, Six Sense, Anna Karenina. Uh, also, we've got Samuel West. He was in Notting Hill, of course, How Is End, and he can currently be seen in ITV's period drama Mr. Selfridge, which we are all loving, by the way. Yes, yes. All right, me very, very nice good. Very nice to see you. Now, together, uh, they're about to start alongside Bill Murray in a movie called Hyde Park on Hudson, and here is a taste. No king of England had ever visited America before. So nice of you to come. Mr. President, forgive me for not getting up. So Franklin invited them here, to the country, where we could all relax. Your mother has now told me for the tenth time not to call Her Royal Highness Elizabeth. Do you mind if I call you Elizabeth? No. No. It was just one of those At the things. picnic, the President's wife has organized just that hot dogs be served as our main dish. Are they trying to make fun of us? I don't. No. Just one of those it's going to be a big, big success. Just one of those She's obviously his mistress. Look over there. The secretary. They'll see us. <laughs> Guys, why did Hyde Park go to the Hudson? And we talk about Hyde Park, we're talking about the King and Queen, Bertie, as would have been portrayed in the, the Queen's speech. King's speech. King's yes. speech. King's speech. And uh, it was the Queen Mother we were talking about. That's right, Elizabeth. Yeah. So why did they, well, they It was go the name of Roosevelt's summer residence. Uh, it's a, actually a village on, in upstate New York. So, uh, as the Queen says, it's awfully confusing. Hyde Park's in London, <laughs> but in this case it isn't. And, um, and they go there for a, a, a weekend visit in the summer of 39, when war is imminent, basically to get the American support. They're begging, basically. Yes. They're going there cap in hand. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Which well, the Americans want to make a great deal of. I play Eleanor Roosevelt, the wife of the president, and she just loves the fact that royalty are coming round uh, mm. and want something from them and being a Republican in the sense that she doesn't believe in royalty and standing on ceremony for anybody that she believed all people were created equal she, there's this great debate as to whether she would curtsy or not whether, when and, she did she? and did she? Yeah. You have to go and see the movie. Oh, oh. Yes. Well, <laughs> we know the answer. <laughs> yeah. um, Roosevelt, I mean he was a box of tricks really. Um, he, he was, he, Churchill spent an awful lot of tri time trying to convince this man off the cause and getting involved and obviously it took him a couple of years. Um, do you think he wanted to get involved in, in the war? I think it's very difficult at, at the time because he's got a lot of political opponents and also because the king isn't particularly popular because of course the king's the younger brother of this wonderful Hollywood looking man who was married to an American, mm. Mrs. Simpson. Mm. And all the Americans are thinking, where's our film star with the nice American wife? Yeah. Right. Who's this rather strange person with a stammer mm. who's married to a sort of sm small person we don't really know? Um, so it's a big PR exercise, mm. which luckily worked. All the Americans Guys, they created the quite a friendship, it seems, that they were, there was some kind of kindred spirit. Well, the, the Richard, Richard Nelson, the writer, has very cleverly put together two people who have physical challenges. Mm -hmm. Roosevelt, in this case, has polio, but we never knew that because he was never photographed in his wheelchair. And the king, of course, has his, ter his terrible stutter. Uh, and and the, the story is that, you know, people will ignore that if they want you to lead them. Yeah. You know, y you look at this, this, this whole thing, and um, Olivia, what an amazing period in history. A scary period in history, you know, not only for the British, particularly scary, I think, for, for the British, but also the Americans, how they were going to be drawn in. They had gone through World War I, they had lost uh, so many uh, sons of America in, in that as well. Um, how do you as an actor, you guys, when you dress up like that, you get into to that, that mood and that times, I mean, do you sort of take yourselves away from the here and the now? Do you transport yourselves somewhere else? I mean, I, I started doing a tiny bit of research in Eleanor and ended up obsessed with her. She is just a joy to research. She mm. wrote an article every day in the newspaper. She wrote letters. She had an evacuee that she wrote to once a week for the entire war. He lived in Wales. She just really? was such a fascinating that. woman. Yeah. And uh, she was one of the opponent, opponents. She didn't want to go to war and she was very much... Um, Would she have had a big influence on him? Well, she did. She. I mean, we're looking now at how Hillary and uh, and Michelle are so confined by what they were able to do while they were president's wives. I believe it's because Eleanor was mm. such a tough cookie, and she really was manipulating. Did he love her? 
Are we able to Ooh. find out? Ro Roosevelt yeah. love Eleanor. Yeah. Mm, well, that's a difficult wow. question. I think he, he had a funny way of showing. It. <laughs> well, what's interesting is that they're two very modern marriages, and they're, and they're you know two extremely powerful women who were so important for the for the for the reigns. Of, the, of these two people. But I love that there's all this kind of history, but then behind the scenes there's the kind of gossip that goes like any couple, you go and say, did you hear them rowing last yeah. night? And what's going on with that? Well, woman? that's the thing. So it's, they just it's a little house. house. Yeah. Yeah. It's a little country house with cardboard walls, not a big palace. And so all the um, bedroom hopping that goes on is, uh, is very palpable in the film. But something that the director said, which I loved, he's, he said this is... I want this to be like a Midsummer Night's Dream. It's like uh, the extraordinary spirit that overtakes people when they go out of their own comfort zone and come back slightly changed. Well, I think by the it experience. feels like they, they felt that they were rather mistreated. They didn't get the kind of room that they were expecting. Mm. They were given hot dogs to eat in front of the press. Mm. And yet, I think Roosevelt said he. He wanted to do that to make them seem more normal and more relaxed. Well, that's true. And in fact, being put it out of their comfort zone was very good for the couple, as a lot of people find when they go to America. You know, you, you go, oh, I can reinvent myself here. Do I want to? Mm -hmm. And then you get back and everybody thinks that you've done rather a good job and you go on to have a successful reign. Mm -hmm. and, and sort of what happened in America stays in America. Mm -hmm. I think that's, st that's still happening. Talking about a big job, do you feel pressure as an actor at all? Come on. You know, you get Colin Firth, <laughs> come on. You get Colin Firth doing the King's Speech yeah. and whatever it is and everybody has their idea of what this King's going to be like. Do you have a little sneak at that? Do you think, do you deliberately do it? Oh, I certainly saw it yeah. and I loved it. Um, the first thing to say is that if Colin hadn't won an Oscar for it, I don't think our film would have been made quite so quickly. Interesting, <laughs> yes, uh, yes. The second is that he's an actor I've loved and admired for a long time, and, you know, if I did get to nick anything from him, at least I'm stealing from somebody good. <laughs> <laughs> Fair play, you can't yeah, say better than that, no, really. No, really I can't. respect to you for taking it on, because it was a terrifying moment. Yes. It was actually still the same year, I think, when we filmed it, yeah. to take on that role. But, you know, what's lovely is both the King's Speech and our film, Hyde Park on Hudson, are separate works of art. They're films, they're not Neither of them is a documentary. Neither person is trying to be that. We just wanted to tell this story, and it's a very different story. And it does educate mm. people too. You say, oh, I didn't know that. And mm. Roosevelt being in the wheelchair. It's a really fascinating turning point in history, well, that particular month. Yeah, yeah it sounds brilliant. It's Hyde Park on Hudson. It's out next Friday. It's yes, worth it is a watch. February, mm -hmm. next Friday already. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. worth a watch. Thank you so much. Anything Thank exciting? You. Doing anything exciting coming up, Naya? Second after series of Mr. Selfridge. Fingers Selfridge. crossed. Yes. 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 Thank God. I've yeah. just got back from making a movie with Arnold Schwarzenegger, which had its own uh, its own charms. <laughs> <laughs> well, come back and tell us about that. I will. Being released. I'm sure I will. I'm sure there's a lot to say about that. <laughs> and we've got the charms of Rosemary Schrager's lamb stew and a few little drams to celebrate oh, nice. Burns Night yeah. as well after this. <laughs> We're cooking with Rosemary Schrager. Yes, there she is, preparing. Mm. Yeah. Morning. Mm -hmm. Morning. Yeah, cooking mm. a 